Hi, I'm Andrew, aka Quasi from Quasi's Bell Tower. And I'm your brother Brian from Brother Brian Discoveries. And this is Point Rock Review. <laughs> Impaled Ale by Middle Ages. Brewed and bottled. Okay. Oh, this is a Syracuse beer. Syracuse. I do not know that. I do not see the alcohol by volume on this beer at all. Ah. Does it smell like a pale ale? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Uh, that might impale me. It's Sniff away. definitely cloudy. I can yes. oh, oh yeah. Can't see through it. Nope. Smells like an IPA. Mm -hmm. It's got a almost like a wet dog smell to it back there too. <laughs> okay, there's only one way to find out if it tastes like wet dog or not. Mm -hmm. For a uh, Indian Pale Ale, it doesn't really taste like an Indian Pale Ale, really. It does have that about it, but it's not strong into that. It's more towards a Pale Ale than anything. Yeah, it's a very tamed down Pale Ale. There, in, in I, IPA, IPA, yes. I think it has a bit of high alcohol to it. At least I can taste the alcohol in it. Right. Oh yeah, I can too. I don't feel like I'm being impaled. What gives Syracuse? I want to feel and feel impaled. I want you to impale me. Impale me! Impale me! Well, next beer for the evening, we have Table Talk from the Old Busthead Brewing Company. Mm. Vint Hill Series? Vint Hill Series? Mm. But it's a Belgian style wit, wheat beer, brews, fruit and spices. Okay, so I apologize if I'm messing up this person's name. Francis Falquer, namesake of our home county, was no stranger to gambling. In fact, it was over a game of poker complete with some rousing table talk that Francis lost his family inheritance. Mm. Bad Francis. Bad. Uh, but gained himself a spot as the governor of Virginia. How the hell do you do that? I don't know whether to slap this guy or commend the shit out of him. <laughs> In keeping with Falquier's spirit, we took a gamble with our Belgian style wit, adding passion fruit and guava puree for a new take on this traditional style. Packed with flavor, but still sessionable enough to enjoy again and again. We recommend enjoying Table Talk with some lively company. But passion fruit and guava. Interesting. But 5.3% I'll call by volume. So this will be an interesting beer. This will be, this will definitely be a table talk. A table talk beer. Pop roasting sushi smells like. Wow. I'm getting approval from it. I don't know, Brian. Let's pour it out and see. It's like a light yellowish beer. Okay, Brian, I don't know. It doesn't smell as fruity as it did when I first smelled it. No. But it's kind of cloudy. I guess, I guess you can say it's cloudy, but it's a light beer. There's nothing floating light in it. Light color beer in it. There's nothing floating in it, which is good. So uh, let's drink this bad boy and see what we're dealing with. Yes, ma'am. Wow. That's different. I don't think I've had anything like that. No, that's, that's very, very strange. I can taste the wheat mm. and I can taste the guava. Passion fruit, maybe, but yeah, the, yeah. I can definitely taste the guava. But I'm having a hard time like just drinking it. Mm. It's just, I want to, you know, when I swallow it, it's just like, the, mm. it just, I'm like, I don't like the taste of it really in my mouth. It's just weird. It's like now I gotta swallow this. <laughs> um, it is interesting though with the wheat and the guava. 
I just don't really care for that taste. I mean, it's it's almost got that fermented kind of taste to it, but it doesn't really pull through all the way, if that makes any sense. But I can honestly say I have not, I don't think I've ever tasted anything like that. No. That's got a flavor all of its own. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm so on the fence about that flavor. I can't tell if it's if it's good or bad. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, It's just so different. Yeah. So for our first review tonight is Impaled Ale uh, by Middle Ages Indian Pale Ale. Um, we don't know what the alcohol on this was at all, even though you could taste it. Um, it really wasn't that bad of a beer. It almost tasted more like a um, pale ale than an Indian pale ale, or Indian pale ale. Um, I didn't think it was that bad. It tasted pretty good. Um, it was pretty smooth. I kind of liked it. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know if I'd buy this again because, you know, it's an IPA, but anyways, I think I'll give it a three because uh, it was pretty smooth and it wasn't very overpowering. Even the alcohol for being, we don't know what it is, seemed a little high. It wasn't too bad. It's, it's kind of a... Uh... It's a very low rated IPA. It's uh, or should I say, I don't want to say low rated, I'll say understated IPA. Um, I don't know if I would ever buy it again. It's interesting, but it, it didn't really have anything all that redeeming about it. It meets the bar for me, but doesn't do anything to exceed it. So I'm gonna go three. Okay, Brian, so what about our next one? Uh, our next one was the old bust head and uh, I certainly hope there's no sexual connotations about that, but the table talk uh, needed um, needed to get rid of something, I think. I think there was so much going for it, but uh, I, I'm still on the fence whether or not I like it, and I'm going to go ahead and rate it a three because it is something I would drink again because I would still be curious. Table Talk this is definitely one I want to talk about. Like, if you want to taste a weird beer, try Table Talk. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I honestly don't think it does anything for me to for it to exceed three. But uh, I think it still meets the bars. I, I'll give it a three. Okay. So my thought of the Table Talk or Table sorry Table Talk beer, the Belgian style beer, um, just. Taking the first sip, you could taste the wheat right away, which is fine. And then you get that passion fruit and the guava, well, mostly the guava uh, taste from it. And uh, it's definitely one of those beers where if you were, you know, gave one of these to everybody at the table, it would definitely be a beer to talk about um, just because of the taste and everything else. Uh, I think this is the first time we've had one with guava and wheat and the uh, uh, passion fruit. Oh, at least, at least I think so. It's first for me, so yeah. Um, it was interesting. Uh, I think this is more of a sipping beer than like a downing beer. I don't know, for some reason, every time I try to take a decent size uh, swig of it, I, yeah, I was having a hard time swallowing it. Uh, and that's probably because of the guava or whatever else. Uh, but anyways, um, I can drink this. I don't know if I'll drink it again. Maybe if somebody gave it to me, I would. But uh, it wasn't bad, uh, honestly, and it's something I've, we've never had before. And honestly, I will give it a three. Um, kind of just setting that bar for this kind of beer. So that's it. That's two beers, two reviews, and two more reasons for you to impale that like button. Table talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Table talk to you later. Table talk to you later. Till next time, guys. Bye. Any of you local viewers that watch our channel, go check out Anacosti and check out their huge selection of, oh, yeah. of beers. If you want something different than the norm, I would go there. So if you're ever in Rome, New York, go check out Anacosti and tell them Point Rock Review sent you.